Okay, great. So thank you very much for the kind introduction. I'm Thank you very, very much for the um, invitation to Subith and uh, Dean Georgiopoulos. Um, I'm excited to be giving to you this uh, brief overview of my research. Um, and thank you for this great initiative of bringing faculty together and enhancing collaborations. So my name is Vasilios Anagnostopoulos. I'm assistant professor with the Department of Chemistry. Today I'm going to give you an overview uh, of the uh, interdisciplinary field of radiochemistry and some applications uh, pertaining to environment, materials, and nuclear forensics, uh, which is pretty much my expertise. Um, my background is I have a bachelor's in chemistry and a master's degree in analytical chemistry, as well as a PhD in nuclear chemistry and radiochemistry oh. from the University of Patras in Greece. I did my postdoc at the University of Miami here in the United States, and then I worked for a couple of years uh, with the Applied Research Center. It's, this is a, an interdisciplinary research center located inside the campus of Florida International University in Miami, but is fully funded and directly funded by the Department of Energy. So my background is a little bit academic as well as federal government related. Now, what does my research group is dealing with? We are dealing with both fundamental and applied aspects of radiochemistry. Specifically, we have a lot of research progress, projects excuse me, related to the nuclear fuel uh, cycle and specifically the back end. What is the back end of the nuclear fuel cycle? Radioactive waste management, nuclear fuel disposal, uh, and specifically <clears throat> development of materials for radionuclide retardation. Uh, as well as environmental radiochemistry and nuclear forensics. So in the next few slides, I'm going to describe to you briefly what the, every project and every sort of like pillar of my research is, uh, is related to. And you will see that those three are not, um, you know, independent from each other, they're quite related. So nuclear fuel disposal, to start with that, is our need, our current need to find the perfect home for radioactive waste. Nuclear energy is bipartisan, is a, have, uh, receives bipartisan support in the United States by both major parties, and it's only, uh, it's only projected to grow. And the funding for research pertaining to anything related to nuclear is only um, projected to grow. But we have to find a home for our radioactive waste. And this is where my research starts, which is what is the perfect home? Usually the best case is uh, geological repositories. And what happens there? What is the chemistry? that takes place in nuclear and geological repositories because we have extreme conditions. What happens in case of a leakage? And radionuclides leaking out to the environment, to the near field of the geological repository, or what happens if they reach the far field, which is you know, quite further far away in the aquifer? Can we design, can we design like smart materials in order to stop the proliferation of radionuclides? So with the Environmental Radiochemistry project is funded by the Department of Energy, the Office of Environmental Management. We've been blessed with collaborators, with great collaborators from the federal government, specifically Savannah River uh, National Laboratory in Pacific Northwest. Um, our approach is, if I have to break it down to a couple, two or three steps is, understand the mechanism of contaminants. In this case, it's radionuclides and their interaction with natural substrates, with things that are in the environment. In other words, substrates, chelating ligands, um, biotic and abiotic processes. And by understanding the mechanism, we can predict their mobility and create assessment scenarios. And then we can also work with stakeholders, such in the, ca in the case of uh, the Department of Energy to design remediation strategies. First, you understand the problem, then you can apply a possible uh, solution to it. And you can see here in the in the in the um, in the in the figure a uh, couple of like representative type of like figures from uh, projects that we've done. We had actually studied the redox chemistry uh, between um, redox active substrates as manganese oxides with the radioactive contaminants related to the Department of Energy, such as radioiodine as well as plutonium. This work has gathered uh, national awards for my uh, research group, which I'm really very proud of, and that's why I wanted to share with you. Their work has been actually uh, awarded by the American Chemical Society for both undergraduate and, and, and graduate level for their accomplishments and the breakthrough in the science. When it comes to nuclear fuel disposal, our collaborators are again from Pacific Northwest National Lab and as well as Idaho National Lab and our funding agency is US Nuclear Regulatory Commission. I am the recipient of the US NRC early career of 2019. In this case now, we are trying to understand the complex chemistry of radioactive waste at extreme conditions. Why do I say extreme conditions? Because 
there is a consensus that we will be burying a radioactive waste in geological repositories. So the chemistry, because of the physical chemical conditions over there, is a very, very unique and very particular. We're talking about elevated temperatures, high ionic strength conditions, absence of oxygen. That, of course, is a little bit of a departure from sort of like mainstream chemistry. So we want to understand those type of interactions for assessment scenarios purposes, as well as test and synthesize materials for the retardation of radionuclides. In other words, we want to actually be able to synthesize functionalized materials that will be part of the barriers, the barrier material. The barrier material is the material that surrounds the radioactive uh, waste tank. In order, in case of liquids, they will be selectively um, chelating or uh, complexing, if you like, with the radionuclides, not allowing them to go any further, to put it in a simple way. Um, again, I'm very proud of my graduate student who actually got the second award on a national level from the Department of Energy in the uh, R&D Nuclear Innovations last year for his work on uh, the proliferation of fission products in uh, uh, far uh, near and far um, environments uh, when it comes to nuclear repositories. Last but not least, one of our newest um, a, um, Projects is in the field of nuclear forensics, and we collaborate with Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory as well as University of Florida and the University of California, Irvine. And we are involved with the National Nuclear Security Agency and the Department of Homeland Security. Our approach here is our objectives, again, if I had to break them down in two, in two main categories, is one, develop ultra-sensitive analytical techniques for nuclear forensic signatures and measurements in the environment. In other words, we want to be able to understand and identify the signature in case of a radiological threat, which we all, of course, hope that is never gonna happen, uh, in order to be able to um, uh, trace them back to their source, number one. And number two is to understand, in case, again, of a radiological threat, post-forensic forensic detonation debris surrogate is what I call this, uh, this, this <coughs> project is understand how uh, debris from a detonation event is going to be incorporated into the environment, uh, its stability, and also, of course, understand the physical chemical properties of this like glass, uh, glassy type of materials the fallout. Here in the figure, you can see a method that we actually, an analytical technique that we actually sort of like um, are using in our lab. And it's a, it's, it's a cutting edge technique and it hyphenates ion chromatography and inductively coupled plasma mass spectrometry uh, in order to do one step analysis and be able to differentiate different isotopes and different species in the environment. Uh, for example, plutonium-3 from plutonium-4 and plutonium-5, like the oxidation state, but also at uh, parts per billion or parts per trillion level. So ultra sensitive, techniques uh, in order to um, identify the signatures in the environment. Now, this is a brand new field that we've just re very recently opened up, and this is a very interdisciplinary and can support a, uh, collaborations with many different uh, scientists from many different backgrounds, engineers, um, geologists, environmental chemists, and so on and so forth. I'll give you a brief overview. This is the uh, analytical instrumentation that we have in our lab currently. I'm not going to mention any analytical instrumentation that you are already familiar in the, in the MCF uh, facility. So we do have scintillation counting, which allows us to measure radionuclides, alpha and beta and gamma emitters. We have ion chromatography and, mass, uh, and ICPMS for elemental analysis, as I mentioned. We do use UVVIS uh, conjugated with uh, potentiometric titrations for compleximetric st studies, as well as GCMS for organometallic type of compounds. And we have the capability to work in an anaerobic glove box uh, and simulating conditions in the absence of the, the environment. Near term and long term goals. Well, again, that's a field that's the most challenging part of a, of a presentation, right? Near term goals is to um, spearhead the Department of Homeland Security and Department of Defense funding opportunities in nuclear forensics and carry on the tradition that I started a couple, three years ago uh, since I joined UCF for um, linking students with uh, and summer internships and summer fellowships in the national lab so they can get exposure from, from the, during their um, PhD um, studies, uh, exposure to how real world problems actually work and how the federal government is working and this way can use the network for even for employment afterwards. Long terms, this is where 
I hope our audience comes in. I would like to actually translate our and, and carry over the know-how from our experience so far to with other uh, collaborators in order to uh, emphasis to give emphasis into emerging contaminants, things that were not working, but we can use our analytical background to help in this case, as well as um, munition red residues, for example, which is a um, high, high topic of high interest for the Department of Defense. And more importantly, collaborate on modeling. I'm an experimentalist. We are, my group is experimentalist, and sometimes this is where we struggle in order when we actually want to create models, any type of model, interface model, thermodynamic transport model, and so on and so forth. And wrapping it up, I just want to acknowledge our funding agencies, uh, the NRC, Department of Energy, NNSA, of course, UCF, because this is, this is what I call home for the past four years and acknowledge my students for working really hard and uh, with excitement and being motivated and uh, being really excited about this field that maybe a few years they have never heard anything about it. Thank you all very much for your attention. I'm very, more than happy to take any questions you may have.